Hello and welcome to A Cup of Conversation. First of all, I'd like to say Happy New Year to all our wonderful viewers once again. And I would like to introduce a new guest, a brand new guest for a brand new year in 2020. And recently just met the lovely Amelia Mehmed. And Amelia was recently on Turkish television on TV8. And she was in the blind auditions for The Voice of Turkey. A very, very unique experience for Amelia, a very talented young lady. So we've got lots of chit chat with a lovely young lady and a bit of music as well on the show today. So first of all, Amelia, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me on here. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Now, uh, before we talk about your music career, let's talk about you. Now, you have a lovely name, Amelia, but your surname is Mehmet. So I am assuming that you have a very different background. What's your background? Well, my mum's uh, Italian Cypriot and my dad's Cypriot, so I'm a bit of a combination. Bit of a combination. Okay, and I think you, we, a lot of people know your mum as well. Uh, tell us a bit about your background in Cyprus, because you're, you're working uh, at a very popular location, aren't you? At mum's shop, um, we've got a beauty salon called Amore in Lacta, and um, yeah. Is that, what you're, is that what you're doing? Is yeah, that, I'm a beauty therapist. Me is that what you mom. trained in? Yeah, I went to beauty school, yeah. You're very young, you're only 20, aren't you? So you graduated from high school, and is that what you wanted to do, go into beauty? I did, yeah, I wanted to go into beauty and have a bit on the music side as, as well, but that came later on. So at 17, I started training to be a beauty therapist, and by 18, I had all of my qualifications. Have you always lived in Cyprus? Because you've got very good Turkish as well. I know, you, uh, off air, we were speaking, and, and you, know, you, know, you know a lot of Turkish, but have you always, where were you born? I was born in, in London. And then, I wasn't very old, we moved straight back to Italy and we lived in Verona for about 10 years and then we came and lived here for 11. Wow, so you know Italian as well then? Ah, grazie, that's what I remember. <laughs> I actually went to Italy for six months and I did learn a bit of Italian, but I've lost it all now, but it's a beautiful country. It's difficult, Italian's very difficult. So is Verona where your mum's family Like my from? nan's, your my nan nan's side, we're all... From Verona. So half Italian, half Turkish on one side, and half and, and then and Turkish Cypriot on the other Cypriot, side. Cypriot, yeah. So very, very good. And of course, the Italians came to Cyprus, didn't they? The island of Cyprus, the Venetians years ago. So it's a very nice link, isn't it? Yeah. All. So you you uh, you graduated from Nedjap Bridge College, didn't you? Here, yeah. and you've always been here since then. You've gone into your mother's business, beautician. So you, do you enjoy yourself? Uh, yeah, I during I the day. It. Yeah, yeah. Working with beauty. Yeah, you meet new people, and I love to hear our clients' stories. They all have different stories. It's just lovely. I love my job. Really, it's um, I'm a bit of a people pleaser. You know, when you do, you know, a new set of nails or makeup for someone or eyelashes, they they get really happy about it, and it's so nice to see it. I bet you had a busy time over the festive period. Oh my God, Christmas people coming so in, <laughs> wanting special festive they want snowflakes and Santas and. <laughs> Very good. The reason why you're here, aside from your talents in beauty, is that you actually recently, not so long ago, went to Turkey for the Voice of Turkey competition. Yeah. So obviously you have an interest in music. Tell us a bit about that, the background. Have you always been singing or were you a young girl with the hairbrushes and microphones yeah, in front of the mirror? Definitely, from quite a young age. But from 11 I started taking it more seriously. I started more with guitar and I started to sing with the guitar. And then I moved on to like piano and then I knew cello from quite young. So music's always been a big part of my life. I love music, so. I think I remember you reminded me as well before the interview that, because my son goes to your school that you went to and you said to me that, oh, you remember seeing me and my family uh, when you were singing yeah. at a Disney 23rd of April show. Yeah, for Children's show, Day. Children's Day. And what did you sing on that day? Um, Aerial Part of Your World. Yes, I remember that now. Didn't you have the, the ginger hair as well, or not? Did you have a hair piece on? I on? think I had a hair piece. Or were you, were, were you, were you just natural? It was natural? always dyed, yeah, probably. Probably natural. <laughs> God knows what colour I had. So even at school, you were like involved with music and singing for school productions? It was Miss Siddle's like, favourite song. She asked me to do that one. Yeah. And I remember I learnt it. It's such a sweet song. It's lovely. So my sister, your ex headmistress, she actually asked you to do that song. <laughs> you hadn't known it before, you hadn't sung it before. I, I knew of it, but I like, didn't properly learn it, because it wasn't a song I'd normally go for, I'm more like jazz. Yeah. So this was all like princessy, sweet, you know, Disney song. But um, I remember Miss Siddle was there in the, when we were auditioning, like not auditioning, like practicing, and she was like, yeah, I want that song. It was a really sweet song. Excellent, so from high school, uh, you know, 
at school doing things for the for the productions going on there for 23rd of April or end of year shows, you decided that you know you want to take it a bit more seriously. Yeah. But have you actually ever had any professional music les lessons, singing lessons? Not any singing lessons. I had um, I had some help with my breathing because once I started getting onto bigger songs and more powerful songs, obviously your breathing technique is a big part of it. So I took some lessons with a lady called Francine and she helped me with my breathing for a little bit, but it, I didn't have like years of lessons. It was just like a little bit and that really helped. She gave me some really good techniques and tips and that was about it. Do you think that when you were younger, were your parents encouraging you? Were you always asked to sing at family gatherings or something? Or, come on, g give us a song, when Amelia. Be out. If there was like an open mic or a karaoke, mum would be like pushing me. Like, go on, Amelia, you again. can do it. Yeah. I know from social media that your mum was really excited about you going for the auditions for TV8. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, because we weren't actually friends on social media before uh, today, but um, at that point I knew your mum and she was like putting all things going on. So I knew that you were going, the process that you were going through, we were following via your yeah, mum. everyone knew. Uh, and what happened. And in fact, she told us, she shared a video of your, you know, your actual show on TV Sekiz, on TV8 in Turkey. How did it all come about? So there you are, all of a sudden thinking, I want to enter this competition. What did, how did TV8 and Orses Turkey, the voice of Turkey, come about? Well, about three years ago, Mum filled out a form. And I didn't know she filled out a form, but she uh, filled out a form online and sent it to the voice. So they, I think she had to send a clip of me singing and then put my name and everything. So she sent that and we never heard back from them. Mm. So obviously they must have so many people that apply for the show. So. You know, just a few months ago, we got a phone call and it was a lady that worked for The Voice and she was saying, oh, would you like to come for an audition? We're coming to Cyprus. Because obviously I think you'd have to go to Istanbul to do the audition. So they held the first audition here at Grand Pasha Hotel. Mm -hmm. So I went there and there was quite a few people. And what you do, you sang in front of their camera crew and then they'd film it, bring it back to Istanbul, show it to a sound person there. And then you'd have to do like three auditions before going on to TV. So if all of them said yes, then you're through. Right, so originally you said this was about two or three years ago, your original application, and then you probably would have forgotten about that. We've all you, forgot no? about it. So what happened then? I mean, wh one day you just got a call out of the blue. Out of the blue. Saying... I thought it was a client calling, so onto the <laughs> phone, you're like, hello, Maura Tanning of Beauty. But it wasn't, it was like, hi, I'm from The Voice. And I was like, pardon? And it was just this long pause. <laughs> And because you know great. Turkish, obviously they were conversing with you in Turkish. They, yeah. You know, we're, we're I thought calling I misheard. From, you know, we're calling from uh, Turkey, The Voice. You know, can we audition you or something? And that must have been a great surprise. It was lovely. So you went to Grand Pasha. Yeah. Uh, for the very first audition. Were there a lot of other people there? Was it a day when everyone in North Cyprus there was, auditioned? I think it was... I don't know, I didn't see it advertised anywhere, so I don't know if it was just people that filled out forms only. Yeah. Because I didn't see it advertised. So, like, you know, it wasn't like as if they said, well, we're going to be in Cyprus this day, come and yeah. song. So, obviously, they must have had a few people who they the wanted forms. in the forms who were from North Cyprus and decided to come along and call you in one day. Yeah. So, what song did you sing? Can you remember the first audition song you um, did? I sung Adele when we were young, and that actually ended up being the one that I sung on TV, because they choose for you. Right, so that was your, also your blind audition track that unfortunately, well, we're going to tell, talk about the, the future in a, in a bit. So, all right, can you do a bit of a Adele for us? I'm putting you on the spot now then. So, okay. here you are now. So, I am now auditioning you. Okay. I'm now sitting across from you. You can Amelia, be my Simon Cowell. We now Cowell. have Amelia Mehmet. She's going to be auditioning for The Voice <laughs> of Turkey. So, do us a bit of your Adele, please. Wait, that song, do you want that song? Yeah, do that song for us. Okay, do you want me to start from the start? Okay. Everybody loves the things you do From the way you talk to the way you move Everybody here is watching you Cause you feel like home You're like a dream come true Do you want me to stop there? That's <laughs> right, that's fine, fantastic. We've got a bit of your voice there. What was it like then, singing first time in front of people who were actually going to be scrutinising you, weren't they? Because I mean, at, at the end of the day, karaoke is fun and everyone's clapping and everyone yeah. loves Amelia or everyone loves the <laughs> No atmosphere. one's judging. <laughs> but this time, for a professional, a professional level. TV show, was it very nerve-wracking or oh, were you yeah. relaxed? No, I was kicking it, I was dying. Like, you think it's all fine, because my mum was backstage as well, so you give her a hug and then they're filming you as you're going on. So at first, you're like, okay. And then when you're in front of the four chairs, you're like, oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit scary then. I just tried to close my eyes and not think about it, but... <laughs> it can't be easy. It's not easy no. at all. 
It was more, I was scared in front of the judges, not all of the people, because like you can't really see all of the audience. It's more the four chairs, them four bright red chairs that are in front of you. Yeah. Like. That's it. I mean, it's a spotlight on you, and then everything else is dark, is it, around you, I suppose? You so can't really see. The lights are on you and the chairs. You and the, uh, the judges. Yeah. Was it you? <laughs> the first round, obviously, you got through. They filmed you here in North Cyprus, yeah. went back to Turkey. Then how long after that initial... 11 audition? days. 11 days later, 11 what days happened later. then? They called my mum, and um, my mum was out. It was her day off, so she called me. I was at work. And she said, are you ready to go to Istanbul? And I went to what? She went, are you ready to go to Istanbul? And I was like, oh my God, am I through? She was like, yeah, you're through. And then they told her that I would have to sing in front of the pianist. So the head of the orchestra, I'd have to sing in front of him. And mm -hmm. then we flew out to Istanbul, sang in front of him. There were so many people there. So he had a little chit chat with us. And then one by one, he took us onto the actual stage of where the voice would be filmed in front of those four chairs. But there was no one there. No, empty auditorium. Empty. So you'd kind of get the feel yeah, of. so he's there and he's playing the piano and you're singing to him. So this is not a guarantee you yet that you're no. going to be on TV. No. That you're going to go to the final audition. This is another... It's down to him. It's down to him. He might say, well, actually, you know, you, you know you're not really going to be good enough for this part or yeah. whatever. He could actually turn you down and say, that's the end of your journey for The Voice. Yes. But you got through that, didn't you? What did you sing for him then? Again, you was have the same to song? Fill out a form mm -hmm. of six songs. So three slow, three fast. So out of all of them, he'll do like a minute of each song playing on piano and he wants to see how you sing. And then from them six, he will choose. But he doesn't tell you directly. So that that's the, I think the worst thing is um, once you've sung those songs, he says, OK, thank you, you can go. And then we went straight back to the airport and came here. And he, not, not even 24 hours later, he sends an email saying whether you're through or you're not. So I think that's the most nerve-wracking thing, thinking, am I through, am I not? That 24-hour wait to find out whether you get the email or not, whether you're through. So you got through. I got through. He sent, and he tells you what song he wants in the email. So he writes the song that you are going to sing when you yeah. do the blind audition, which, again, was... Adele when Adele. we were young. So that's quite good, actually, quite lucky. Because in those six songs, you might be more comfortable with one song or another. Uh, I so was hoping you, you might choose that one. song that you might not have been so comfortable with, but you were lucky that you got... That happened with some people. Yeah. But I suppose you shouldn't really write down songs that you're not comfortable with. You've you got to have ones that you love. So you, you better learn six songs, three slow, three fast, that you're very, very good at. <laughs> <laughs> so then you go back. So you got the email with three fast later saying you're yeah. through. Yeah. Then what happened after that? Um, he sent exactly one minute and I think it was like 40 seconds of the song and he said you have to practice exactly this part. So it was like the first verse and the chorus and that was it. So you have to practice that and then after he sent the email, the other people that worked for the show will call you and tell you when you need to be there when your flight is. So after his email, at the end of the day, it was like in the evening, other people from the show called and said, okay, it was a Saturday, I think, Saturday evening, they called and said, we want you here by Monday. So they send you through, they pay for your flights and stuff. So they sent through the details of what time I needed to be at the airport and yeah. fly. Mm -hmm. So on Monday, th Monday is when you sing in front of the orchestra and you practice, I think they called it prova. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you rehearsal. Practice. Yeah, rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So you did a couple of rehearsals. You were there all day. So they pick you up from the airport and bring you straight to the studio. And you practice there all day. And then you go back to the hotel at night and one of the people will call you in the evening and tell you what day you're on TV. So it could have been the next day on Tuesday, it could have been a week from then. So they choose on how far you're down the list you are, what day you're on, and I was on the next day. I was so on quite Tuesday. soon after you actually filmed it, that uh, you, were, you were on TV. Did you get a chance to meet the other contestants? Yeah, I made so there? many friends. Really lovely people. It wasn't how I thought. I thought it was all going to be really competitive and no one would speak. It wasn't like that at all. We all helped one another. So. I've made some really lovely friends, like we did each other's makeup and we practiced together and we ate our pizza together. It was great. Yeah. It was really lovely. So it was a nice experience, it you know, from lovely. start to finish. Did you, I remember you were talking with my colleague Denise Phillips on the radio a few weeks back and you were saying that you felt quite like a, a bit like a superstar because the way you were treated. They, they treated you so nicely. They, so everything was like well organised from start to finish and you felt like, you know, you were something special. They really made you feel like something special. like. The only thing was they'd call you, they'd give you like not very much notice before you had to go, which I can understand because it's a bit like you want to be on the show, so you work around our time kind of thing. Yeah. So I can respect that. 
but uh, yeah, just having your flights paid for, the hotel, food, it was just getting your makeup and hair done and your clothes, it was just lovely. Is it like how you imagined? I mean, I think it's quite, I've never been to another TV studio and ours is very, you know, sim simple here at BRTK. But I can imagine what it's like, uh, or I can't imagine what it's like in a big production like uh, The Voice of Turkey. But is it all like glamour and, you know, everyone's doing your hair and makeup and they're choosing what to wear? Yeah. And then, or is it a lot of waiting around as well? Um, it wasn't actually so much waited around because, for example, say while someone was getting an interview done, I was getting my hair and makeup done, and then they'd come and get their hair and makeup done. I'd go and do the interview, and then it was all different sections. Like you'd have a walk down the red corridor, yeah. and that would be like before. It was all different rooms. That was what was a bit different. So the interview room, and then they had a, just one red corridor where you'd be filmed as if you're about to go on stage. Yeah, like you walk down a corridor. Yeah, and then you're like, like, nowhere, does it? Probably the corridor. No, it was just like two two doors, and that was it. Yeah, <laughs> going into the open. But it, like, it looks like on, when you're watching the TV, like yeah. you look towards the stage. It area. does. It looks like you've just come out the interview room into the red corridor into yeah. the stage. You were saying to me, uh, and this is a unique, I always thought that the, the, the studios of TV8 had their own studio to film TV, you know, to, to, vo to film The Voice, but you were actually saying to me that it's actually at a university, yeah? Yeah, it's in the, in the grounds of the university. And so that's why we have so many students, youngsters, which is a very good thing to have in the audience. Packed. If you need the youngsters there to, they appreciate all the music. Absolutely. What's it like uh, meeting the famous judges because we have well obviously Arjun Ajulal yeah. is the owner of TV8 and the presenter of the program then you've got uh, Beaz yeah. who is a stand-up comedian and singer you've got Seda Sayan she's a singer Hadisa a popular singer and Murat Boz do you you knew of them obviously beforehand before you went yeah what, what was it like do you actually get to see them outside of the I studio. saw them not speaking wise no I'm sure if you stopped them you could but there was like so many security and there's yeah. an upstairs where they take take a break and they go upstairs obviously maybe to eat something yeah or, and so there's a separate cafeteria so there's a cafeteria for like us and there's an upstairs one for them I assume yeah so I was stood in front and I just see all of these like security come through and I was about the distance from me to yours from Hadise and I was just like in awe just watching her go up the stairs like <laughs> oh she's beautiful they're all they were all lovely all really lovely obviously it's the time when you're singing the blind audition is when you actually get to see them face to face and they're looking at you the whole, the whole idea for those who don't know what uh, the voice is about it's a music program, it's a singing contest, and one person will win at the end of the contest. But the idea is that the judges don't see the singer, they can only hear them. They, they, their chair is turned away from the singer, the singer sings, and then if they like the voice of the singer without seeing them, they, they press a button and, they, and the chair turns okay. around. If the judges turn around, fine, you're through to the next round. You can, if more than one judge turns around, you can get to choose who your mentor is. And if you don't get any judges turning around, then that's where your journey ends. But, and unfortunately, that's what happened to you. None of the judges turned around, but they said so many nice things, Lovely didn't things. they? Before we go to that bit, what was it like then? When they said, right, you're filming, you're up next. Amelia, Mehmet, you're next on the stage. This is it. No chance for backing out. No. No chance to say, oh, I'm not ready yet. No. Or can I do another, you know, makeup check? You're on there. What was it like? Was that the most nerve wracking time? Oh my God, it was. So they gave you a list. So before you went on, you signed your form, gave your signature and stuff, and they told you what number you were. So I was number 10. So they took 10 people in the waiting area just behind the stage, like just behind the stage door before you're about to go on. And it got mixed around a bit. So they said, OK, let's have the slow one there, rap or the band. So mm. I think I was I was still number 10, but it was all mixed around. And then all of a sudden you just you're thinking you're not thinking, oh, you know, oh, this is number nine. I'm on next. You're I don't know. For me, I was thinking I was practicing my song in my head just like mad. Mm. And then all of a sudden they said, OK, we've called your mum. Right, get up, it's your turn now. And then they just shove a camera right in front of you, okay? Like, you have to give a hug and speak a little bit, and then it's just the most nerve-wracking thing. The walk onto that stage is the most nerve-wracking thing. And, of course, you've got the crowd as well. You go onto the stage. As I said, I mean, how I watch it, spotlight on you. Obviously, you could see the judges from their point of view. You're in the background, whatever. Then you start singing. So you did a minute and a half or a minute of 10 seconds of 
uh, when we were young, Adele, again. They didn't turn around. Who spoke to you then after, after everyone else, after it all finished and they, the, the chair automatically turned around and they said, oh, can you choose yourself? Who chatted with you? Was it Hadisa? Hadisa started. Hadisa started by singing a part of the song. Yeah. And then they all started talking. What do they say to you? Well, wait, first of all, were you upset? I was devastated. You were devastated that they didn't turn around. But they did say really nice things. You're very young, you're only 20. And I think what they were saying, um, I'm putting words into your mouth, but this is what I remember um, from what I saw, that they said that because you were later on in the audition, mm -hmm. that they'd already had similar singers to you. They have to have and that, So maybe if you, if you were called in earlier, maybe they would have turned around because they wanted a nice uh, young female English yeah. language singer. But because you were later on in the auditions, they already filled up that quota. So what did, what did Hallie say, say to you? Um, you remember? Oh, she said lovely things. Like, she said... Um, what did she say? She said that I had a really nice voice. She said the chorus is very difficult of that song. So she said that she'd like to see me again next year and I'm going to go earlier this year. So it's only in a couple months time yeah. that the starting auditions start again. So I'm going to go a bit earlier. Um, Does that mean things. because you've already been on, does that mean you get a, a special chance? Maybe you don't, you don't have to wait for them to call you, do you now? Or do I mean, there's that sort of agreement where, OK, I mean, they come back again next yeah. year. That's all right for you then. That's I a think guarantee. So, yeah. That's good. So at least you know that you, you know, you'll get a second chance. Do you think, looking back now, that that song was very, very difficult? Because Adele is a very, very powerful singer. I'm not saying that you can't match Adele, but she is a very, you know, you set the standard very high, the bar very high. Especially uh, if you're like proper panicking and stuff. It's. I mean, you mentioned before that you like jazz as well. I mean, will you be changing? Have you, have you thought about what you might sing next? What? I've got, okay, so I love Joss Stone. Mm. Um, and I like Joss Stone's version of I Put a Spell on You because it's quite different. Yeah. So I think that it starts off for the first two lines quite soulful and then it goes into quite a bit of power. So I, I think the way that I've been singing it, it shows all the ranges of my voice. So I think that's, I think they wanted someone with power. Do you know what I'm saying? Not like, yeah. and I'm trying to, I don't think I'll be as nervous when I go on this time because I've already lived it. Yeah. So, I think my nervousness I need to work Okay, I'm put you on the spot now then, but okay. have you practiced that song? Not that much. <laughs> you haven't? Not that much? <laughs> not that much. You don't, want, you don't want to sing a little bit for me then? Can we try a different song? I put a spell on you in your mind. That's that song, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. It's Nina Simone's one. Yeah. I put a spell on... I don't, don't make me sing now. <laughs> we life. can sing it together. No. I'll sing the first two lines, because the, the more powerful part... Yeah, sing the first two lines of us then. I put a spell on you... Because you're mine. That's how it starts, and then it goes into a more powerful part. OK. <laughs> well, you can save it for the real time. You're practising now uh, for the audition. So this will be your audition piece, you, you, you hope, you think. I'm going to put some Turkish ones in there as well, because I think that's maybe what the, the pianist man, the head of the orchestra, maybe wanted to see as well, because it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of people that sung... It was either Turkish or English songs. That's it. I might do half and half, because that would maybe mean... Oh, you know, she can do both. Right. I do sing more English than Turkish, but I've been practising them as well. In all, uh, at the end of the day, do you look back on it as a nice experience? Are, yeah. you, are you glad you did it? I'm really glad I did it. Right. And would, you, would you advise anybody else out there who's thinking of entering to do it? Just don't be nervous at all. I know it's, it's so simple to say. Everyone was saying, oh, don't be nervous, don't be nervous. Really, nervous was what let me down, I think. Nervousness. When you listen to yourself back on that clip, because obviously the clips, it's all been filmed, so, and you know, there are, you know, YouTube clips of everyone who's entered in their auditions yeah. and whatever. When you listen to it now yourself, do you think, well, actually, yeah, I wasn't really at my best. I wasn't yeah. nervous. You, could you notice? You could tell I was so nervous because it was just, I was stood there with, you know, I need to work on my actions, maybe with, with different songs, getting a bit of movement in it, you know, so it doesn't look like I'm stiff. Yeah. That's what it looked like. You could tell I was nervous, and I think it made it worse, because I could tell I was nervous, and you're trying so hard not to be nervous, but you're thinking, oh, my God, I'm in front of, like, four proper massive people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Had, had you had the chance to work with one of the singers, who would you have chosen? Hadisa. Hadisa. You think I had so? a different person in mind when I first went on there, but I'm kind of glad what happened did happen, because it made me change my perspective, not being disrespectful to any of, any of them. I was going to choose Mura when I went on there, because it was the singer that I listened to the most, yeah. which would have made more sense. But I think he's a different kind of 
genre of music. I think he's more, is it more pop? Yeah, Turkish pop, isn't it? Yeah, but when Hadi says started talking, I, I listened to Hadi says music as well. I think it would be between, at first I thought Hadi say or Seda, but I think definitely Hadi said because she was, they're all lovely, but she chatted the most with me. She showed an interest. Yeah. So I think it would be, and she asked me to come back, so I think it'd be just right to go back. I think, I mean, Hadi say is more, you know, more young, hip and trendy and... And she sings both English and... Yeah, and she's got great English and Turkish, so she can help you with both. Yeah. Uh, if you go on to an extra round, because you know, they might ask you to sing Turkish in the, you know, in the future. Do you watch... Uh, are you a fan of the show? Have you been watching over the years? You do like I watch it. all of them. I try and watch... I watch the English one yeah. with Tom Jones on it. I love yeah. Tom Jones. And then the Turkish one as well. I love watching it. Are they similar? I, I haven't actually seen the English one, but are they similar? Very similar, except of, with four English pop stars. They had Will I Am on there at one point. I yeah. don't know if he's still on there, but it was like Jesse J, Will I Am, Tom Jones, and someone else I can't remember. Yeah. And they've got American one. But well. similar formats, similar yeah. what they're doing. I think it is really good that they listen to just your voice, because if you watch like X Factor or American Idol or stuff like that, they do mostly focus on your look, which I think is, it is a bit wrong. They want someone to sell, yeah. basically, and then they can mm. just, they don't really care about the voice. But I think when you're on the voice, they are forced to only listen to your talent. Yeah, not, not to look at you and say, oh, well, she, she looks very pretty young and she'll sell lots of records. Yeah, I think It's actually the talent of the voice. Exactly. Because they've got their earpieces in, they hear, their, they hear your voice perfectly. Don't so they? That's right, yeah. So they know all the mistakes. I mean, we might think, oh, that's a shame they didn't turn around, but they probably pick up on your nervousness yeah. more than you would or I would as a as a Definitely. normal viewer. So it's actually very very difficult. If you get turned, if you get somebody turned around, that means that you got a good voice. Yeah. It is quite difficult to get through. You wouldn't think that it's staged. It, do you, does it feel like as if oh they probably know the winner before even it's all begun? I mean, do you feel that sort of thing sometimes on TV programmes? Would you? I think you definitely think? with with X Factor. <laughs> but not definitely. with it so much. Mm, no, I think I only felt like that with the X Factor because I did watch a documentary. I don't know if you've seen it of a guy that went on there and Simon had told him, you know, took him to the side and said, oh, "You're definitely the winner." And the guy pulled out and said, "That's not fair on yeah. anyone." Yeah, yeah. But I don't know so much of the voice. I think it's a bit difficult because I don't. I don't think they see you, the the four judges. Everyone else sees you, like behind stage. Yeah, of course. Stage, but to do that stage, so everyone's watched you. Yeah. But um, again, it's a blind audition, so they don't really know what you look like. Mm. And sometimes they get quite shocked, don't they? But people, you know, ah, oh, I didn't expect to see that type of person, or you know. You could definitely see it in Murat when he yeah. turned. Out. I think he expected me to be English. And when he turned around, they didn't... If you look on the actual video, they didn't film Murat so much. Yeah. It was the other three. So when he turned around, he was a bit like, oh, she speaks Turkish. Oh, <laughs> like, I didn't expect oh, that. The people you, were, <laughs> you know... He just looked at the ground. English lady <laughs> entering. Well, you've done very well, Amelia. And I think it's not easy to put yourself in front of the public eye like that and sing in front of all these famous Turkish singers. But you've done really, really well. So I look forward to hearing about how you get on in the future. Uh, you're on social media. Yeah. How can anybody follow you? Any um, of our viewers, if they want to find out what you're doing? I'm starting a YouTube channel, but I have got an Instagram where I'll be posting clips of me singing. It's uh, at Amore Laura underscore 99. Right, so... On Instagram. Uh, you'll be sharing more videos in the future. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll, hear, we'll be hearing more from you. But thank you very much for coming in thank today, Thank you media. so much. It was an honour. It's lovely to hear from you. Thank you. And uh, I hope that, you know, you, next time you're doing better. And we'll be rooting for you and we'll thank be voting you. for you as well. Thank Fingers you crossed. so much. You're more than welcome. And with that, we've come to the end of our very interesting chat with Amelia Mehmet. She's a lovely, talented lady. And I hope you enjoyed the programme. Once again, Happy New Year to all our dear listeners and viewers. And until next week, until the next couple of conversations, take care. Bye-bye.